Hello, everybody. I don't know if you guys can see me. Oh, I forgot my iPad. Oh, poop. I can't see any of the comments. Grayson. I have to get one of my get my iPad. So everybody, welcome to Lure Painting Live. I am Krista, the painter behind Colorado Custom Lures. Let me adjust my camera here a little bit so you can see a little more of my um, counter. So right now I have no forgot to grab my iPad, so I have no notes. Uh, I can't tell who's watching, and I can't see if you guys can see me okay. So um, I'm going to check this real quick. Yeah, you should be able to, I think. Can you guys see my? Can you guys see me okay? Let me know if you can't see me okay, because I, I can't. I don't have my... Uh, i got to wait for one of my kids to come out here so I can ask him to go get my iPad, because I'm not very smart tonight, apparently. All right. Um, we're going to do a froggy tonight, so please share the feed with your friends and in your groups. Um, you can use code LIVE in caps to get 10% off through tomorrow night. So I'm just going to do through tomorrow night, not through the weekend since we're doing Thursday now. And um, please share the feed with your friends so everybody can take advantage of that. I have some new stuff in the store. Uh, the chrome square bills are all in the store now. I screwed this one up because I got my eyeball slid. Even though I glue them, I'm, apparently I didn't glue that one well enough. So this is the new chrome square bill that I have in stock. And it's got a fully chrome plated belly. So um, please do check those out if you get a moment. And there's 1.5s and 2.5s, and then I also have a, a blue-black version. So they're pretty cool. Should catch some fish. All right. Let's go ahead and get started. So um, I have some frog cranks. These get a bill. Um, it's a pretty decent size. I'll show it to you later. But it gets um, glued in after they're painted. And so these dive like around 9 to 12 feet or so when they're all done and um, they're pretty realistic looking. So we're gonna do a bullfrog. I kind of started the pattern already um, on here and I was working on that earlier, but uh, I'll start with a different one. I'll start with this one here. So I put some, um, this has Stino Res Primer, which is by Badger. This is an acrylic polyurethane primer. That's what I use and then I also have Wicked um, Detail Opaque White as my base coat. And then on top of that, I put Bloodline Old Bone White. And this is by Createx, and it is the Bloodline um, line of paints by them. And this is as close to a natural bone color as there is on the market. Um, you can make your own bone, usually with a little bit of yellow and white, and then maybe a touch of brown. Uh, depending on how you want it to look, you can kind of tweak it, but that's the main colors that you use to make bone. Or you can just buy it, <laughs> and that's what I did. So on this one, I left it flat, the first one that I did. I'm going to go ahead and put a little shimmer on this just to give it kind of like that glossy look, like it's um, wet, and we'll see if it makes any difference. So this is a... Um, this is a pearl pigment that I got. It's like a mica powder is what it is and um it's used in makeup and um resin and a lot and you can use it in paint as well so that is um what i'm going to use it for i'm going to put some 4004 transparent base in my gun and i am going to i think it's clogged it's a little bit clogged hang on one second here there we go. I should do it. I'm just going to put a little bit of this in, in the, my, well, maybe I didn't unclog it. Well, poop. Must be clogged inside here. I just take a disposable paintbrush. Usually we'll unclog that. So just if maybe, maybe it's the, sometimes, um, I don't know what's clogging that to be honest with you. And then I'll just take a little, um, uh, disposable paintbrush and dip it in this resin. This is like a pearly white. And I'll just get a little bit on the tip of the brush here. 
and then I'll stir it in with this transparent paint. So that'll give you, that's how you can make your own pearls. You can use, um, there's a brand called Pearl X that you might have heard of. Um, this is pretty small. You can't probably see it very well, but they make um, all kinds of different pigments and they're really easy to find. You can find them on Amazon. You can find them at any art store and it comes in all different colors. And you can just add those to your paints and kind of create your own, like your own look or whatever. But anyway, this is just an opalescent kind of pearl. So I have the bone on here already and I'm just gonna put some of this on there to give it kind of like a shimmery look as if it's wet or whatever. And I don't know if it'll make any difference in the end, but we're gonna do it anyways. So I'm just gonna mist that over this whole thing. Try not to put too much on. You can't really see it going on very much. You'll just see a little bit of a pearly finish when you get it on there. And this is another way you can make a uh, pearl bone. And you'll see what that looks like. I don't know how well it's going to show up on your end um, as far as like you being able to see the pearl. But this is one way you can make a pearl bone if you want. This is, um, I don't know if you can see that pearly finish on there or not but it has like a little bit of a pearly finish now um, versus just the bone and that's one way to make pearl bone and you can put as much or as little of the pigment on and then you can drop it on your drop it on your counter because why not right hey grayson grayson he's not listening to me Trying to get him to bring me my iPad so I don't have to leave the show because I'm irresponsible and I forgot to grab it. I knew I was forgetting something today, but apparently I didn't figure it out before I started my show. And unfortunately, I, I tell everybody to leave. I tell everybody to leave before I start my show so that... Um, Yes, I am doing the bullfrog pattern, Anthony. I'm reading your comments because I don't have my iPad in front of me. So hello to everybody. And I'm sorry uh, if I'm not answering your question. Um, please PM me if you have a question and you're not, um, I'm not answering it because I don't have the comments in front of me right now. So I can't see them. If one of my kids pops in there, here, I'll have them get my iPad. All right. So I'm going off of memory right now because like I said, I don't, I don't have my notes. Uh, hello, everybody on YouTube that's watching. And um, so I just put that pearl on there. This other one is one I started, um, and I did a little bit of a brown pattern. And I'm going to do green on the front side and, like, sort of blend them, but I don't really know how I'm going to blend them yet. So let's start with the brown. So what I did to make that tannish brown color is I mixed a little bit of white. And you could use bone if you wanted to, but whatever. I'm actually kind of low on white. I only have the, what's in here left. I need to get some more. So a little bit of white. And then I put a little bit of, um, this is called Detail Yellow Ochre. And um, it's kind of a brownish yellow color. And uh, some people use it for like um, toning, like if you want to, like shading over top of other things to give it kind of like a different tone at the end or whatever what you're doing uh, much the same way that people use sepia and then this is sepia which is essentially a brown color but it's fairly transparent and you can use it to shade all kinds of things and it works really good to give everything like a bit of a softer look in a way um, if you want it to be earthy or whatever versus being cool you can always mist it with sepia if that makes any sense to you the earthy tones versus the cool tones. Um, just kind of misting over it with really well thin step sepia can give you a warmer look. Okay, so I just stirred this with a disposable, whoops, that's the wrong cup, disposable paintbrush, and then I just rinse it out with a water cup. This is a water cup, this is a dump cup. And then if you want to know why I have a crock pot, this is my resin. Everybody always asks that during my show. I, I warm my resin, resin up in a crock pot on low, and that helps it drip uh, smoother, and it keeps it from getting foggy and stuff. So if anybody wanted to know why, I have another one on the other side of my spray booth, and I so I use two at the same time. Okay, so I'm going to take my froggy, and I'm going to do some shading. And I had a photo. 
uh, where, you know, the bullfrog's kind of like brown on the back, on the um, most of the back, but not the whole back. And then the head is a little more green. And then you have your brown, um, what do you call them? You know, their eardrums or whatever they're called. I can't think of the name for some reason right now. Uh, and there's a little bit of spotting like on the sides and the legs of the bullfrog. And then the, the belly is mostly white with a little yellow on the chin. So we're gonna try and make it look as natural as possible. And um, they do vary. Some are very much more colorful than others. So I found a reference photo that I thought was kind of unique and cool looking and somewhere in between bright and not so bright. And I'm gonna try and mimic it a little bit. So I have this stencil, which is oddly not really a stencil. The inside of this was one of the art tool te texture sten st stencils. And this is just the outer edge, like the, the Thing that holded it or hold it held it together and it fell out so i'm using this edge to make you know an interesting lines or whatever and you can you can use just about any edges that you find to do all kinds of different stuff with so um i keep this whole bin full of rando sten stencils and i just use this for things that you would never think you would you would ever use so um i use this to create um, an uneven line across the back where the brown and the blue and the green kind of like come together on the frock. So that's my story. So I'm gonna take this, um, I'm gonna take this, this and I'm gonna put it on the back side here and I'm gonna go across the back and create this kind of jagged line. And I'm just gonna shade the whole bottom part of this brown. <clears throat> So again, if I miss your question because um, I don't have the comments in front of me, please do PM me and I will get back to you as soon as I can. If anybody, if anybody comes in the garage, I'll have somebody grab my other device, but I kind of forgot it. It'd be good to just focus on painting and not answering questions for, for the show. So this is kind of wet, and so I'm gonna make sure that it's dry before I move my stencil. I'm just gonna do a quick quick dry. Some people call it a heat set. You can call it a heat set if you want. So now I just have a little bit of a crooked line and I'm gonna go across the sides, like down the sides with another crooked line. And I'm just gonna pick a different spot on this stencil and I'm gonna line it up um, like just down the side here and we're gonna spray down the side. Now the legs on this frog are pretty much brown. They're like a tannish brown color. So I'm just kind of freehand shaping the, the feet on this. And if I do overspray a little more than I want to on the belly or whatever, you can always come back and fix that later. You don't have... Um, to be super worried about that. Now, um, in between the toes here, there's like some some space in between the toes on these. So in these spaces, I'm just gonna freehand shade a little bit. And then I'm gonna cut, when I do my toes, I'm gonna use some pigment powder and I'm gonna freehand that pigment powder. So you're not going, it's not gonna be a big deal if you get overspray on this. I'll just take like an applicator and I'll just rub it on and I won't paint it on. So I'll show you what I mean when we get that far. Okay. So I am just adding a little more paint onto the back and I'm gonna heat set it. I'm trying to get it fairly dark and then I can always come back and make it darker with some sepia just by itself and just shade over top of that. So I'm going to do this side here now, and I'm just again going, see I made that, that line here on the side, I'm going to just do the same thing on the other side. And I'm just going to um, continue on with that like jagged uneven line over here. I don't really know if this is going to turn out looking like very natural, but I'm trying. 
and we'll see. All right, so I set that aside and I'm shading the other leg here. I have a motion light above me that doesn't like to stay on very long. We had a crazy storm come through just a few minutes, like just this past hour. It didn't really rain that much, but the wind was really crazy. And um, some places in town lost power. It wasn't even supposed to rain, but that's Colorado for you. Okay, so I got this shaded. Um, I got a little tip dry there. Sometimes when you get a little tip dry, if you just like open it wide up and just spray some some paint onto like your desk or whatever, you can get it to break free. Okay, so I've got that shaded fairly well now, and we're gonna try some green, and then um, I'll probably do some shading like in between to make it not look like very a harsh transition. So I'm gonna I'm gonna dump this out. I try and remember to dump it in the right place. Anybody in here? No. They really are leaving me alone tonight. I don't even have anybody to go get me my iPad. <laughs> I don't hear anybody in here. Usually there's somebody on the other side of the garage. I'll check and see if anybody has anything to ask real quick. So let me see if there's any questions. I'm just checking these. Uh, yep, I'm doing a frog. Sorry, I, I can't see the comments, you guys. Um, because I forgot my iPad. Six pounder, nice, Anthony. I wish it was me. Okay. If I get, usually my kids always bother me, but of course when I need them to bother me, they're like, no. All right, so I'm gonna do leaf green now. This is uh, transparent leaf green by Createx, and you don't really need to thin this. You can if you want to, but um, it's pretty transparent by itself. But um, I'm I'm not I'm gonna try not to do it, um, and then we'll see. If I need to, I will. So I'm just gonna shade basically the rest of the body. Oh, I was supposed to do the front legs in brown and I forgot. We'll come back and do that in a minute. I already took the brown out of my gun. We'll come back and do it in a minute. I forgot. Okay, so I don't have to be like super accurate with this line because this paint is lighter and um, lighter than the brown. You don't wanna get it like too crazy overlapping and, and make it look like you know, a different color, but the brown is darker and we're gonna have a little overlap. So I'm just gonna shade around the body here. Share the feed if you can, guys, please, and like my page. Leave me a good review um, if you haven't done that yet. I finally got a review, I got finally got a rating on my page. Thanks to everybody who helped me out and left a review. I don't want you to leave a fake review, but if you love my product, if you've gotten something from me, you loved it, or you like my shows, or whatever, leave me a good review, and that helps me to look legit on Facebook. Because uh, I should have had a rating, but I have a lot of followers because a lot of people follow my show, and so I have to have a certain like number of reviews to followers in order to have a rating, and I didn't have enough. <laughs> because I don't usually ask people to leave me reviews. But like the page, share the feed. Also, you can use the code LIVE10. Um, I didn't paste that at the bottom of the comments. Let me do that real quick. It's in the description. Give me one second, guys, and I'll paste that if I can. In the comments. Is it gonna let me? We'll see if it does. Nope, it won't. Okay, in the in the description, you guys, the description here, there's um, all the details about how to find all, all my other social medias, and also my um, the code is live, 
You can go to my website, coloradocustomlures.com up here, it's posted. And uh, enter the code LIVE to get 10% off your order through tomorrow. I got some new stuff in the store, check it out. Okay, so this is pretty bright and I'm just adding a little bit um, more to get it to be a little deeper. So you don't want to do too much paint at once, otherwise you'll get um, pooling. So you have to be careful how much paint you put down at once. And this stuff is pretty transparent, so it'll be easy to, to overdo it. So when I get done, you know, with these base colors, I'll come back through with some sepia and we'll do some shading, but I'm going to put some spots probably on it first in like a blackish brown color. I don't really have a reference picture because I'm not very smart tonight and I, I have to go off memory, which is, it's fine. So here's where we're at right now. Okay. Everybody can see that. Who's in here? Hey, will you bring me my iPad? I forgot it. Thanks. Okay. Let me clean the green out of here now. I'm just using water in my spray bottle. I always get that question. So that's what it is. It's just water. And then if, if I get dry paint in my airbrush, then I just use a little bit of um, rubbing alcohol that I buy at Walmart or wherever. And I use that to clean it out. So I'm going to do a little black, blackish um, brown. So like maybe a drop or two of black and some sepia. And we're going to do some um, texture and some spots a little bit. I have pantyhose on the um, under the cap of this, two layers, and that's to try and filter out like any big particles because I was having trouble with it spraying smoothly. It kept kind of like getting stuck. So I, um, I'm trying to filter any like larger particles out. So that's why that has the pantyhose in there. And that's a little trick you can use if you ever have a chunky. A bottle of paint or whatever. Thanks, Dave. All right, little man to the rescue. Well, Daddy and little man are helping me out tonight. So now I'll be able to see your comments. My bad on that one. Sorry. Sometimes I screw up. Okay, so I'm gonna grab some stencils. I I set some aside. Um, I like to use a lot of random stuff. So I have all these random stencils. This one's like um, a pumpkin seed or crappie pattern that I found. It was like, I found this picture online. It was like some kind of a taxidermy stencil that I found an image of and so I cut it. And then these are from um, Anarchy Models. Uh, this, I don't remember, I found some picture online of some random pattern. Um, this was something I bought on AliExpress and I like to tape off things. Um, this is a frog stencil I made for my last frog pattern, which was a pickerel frog. Um, and I just have a bunch of other crap, random crap. So this was my pike stencil that I made for my pike pattern. Oh, really? It's going to make me log in. And it's going to make me use my fingerprint. Okay. I'm not putting that glove back on. All right. So we're going to do some, uh, some, I gotta do that brown. I forgot. All right. Let's put this brown on the back side first. Cause I totally forgot about that too. Alright. Um, see more. Hang on a second, guys. I'm trying to pull up my feed so I can see you guys. If they change Facebook one more time, I'm gonna lose my mind. This doesn't look anything like it normally does. Ugh. One more update and I'm gonna lose it for good. You guys, uh, you see the annoyances when you go on Facebook and you're a viewer? When you own a business and you run it on Facebook and they change it all the time, you really hate them. <laughs> Trust me. Because every time you go on, it's like something's different. Everything's different. 
Okay, I'm going back to this brown because I forgot to do the fr the um, the front arms because they're brown as well. So the legs on these are brown generally, and then um, you just have like a little bit of green on the face and the upper body. So let me see if I can see you guys. I'm here now. Is it gonna come up? Is this today? Yep. Oh, stop. It's not gonna work. Huh. Oh, there we go. Eden. Eden! Thanks for the purchase, Eden. <laughs> His piece, uh, Three year old. She ordered him uh, some some bluegills. <laughs> All right. So if I missed you guys comment, I can see him now. So if you if you want to ask me a question again, you can. If I missed it, I'm sorry. I'm slacking tonight. Hey Mark from Ireland. Love it when we have international viewers that's pretty cool i'm just shading the the front arm on this frog right now i'm having problems with this airbrush too um the trigger is not lining up right with the plunger and so i'm not even really sure what to do about that maybe get a new trigger i don't really know I'm just freehanding this because stenciling it is almost impossible. I mean, you could probably make a stencil to go around that arm or whatever, but um, I would rather just like come back through and tidy up any messes after I'm done instead of trying to make a stencil to go around it because it would be, it'd be awkward. It'd be hard to match the line. And so I would just not bother probably. So if you can, like, just kind of try and stay close to the lure and uh, just watch your trigger and go slow and just kind of uh, fill it in. Okay, so I'm kind of just doing, like, a little bit on the hand, and I'll show you. So I was just spraying the arms on this one. Okay, because they're supposed to be brown and I like screwed up and I didn't make them brown. I'm going to add just a little more um, paint to the legs. Because they're a little bit on the darker side and now I'm going to rinse this, whoops, wrong cup. I put way too much in there because I had a mix colors. So there's way too much So I hope everybody's doing good tonight and having a good week. And if you got if you got any exciting fishing plans, share it with us. Chris has a tournament this weekend for the ABA on Sunday out here. That should be good. Eden says thank you. <laughs> oh sweet, you got rain the next seven days, huh? Yeah, I can only see a few of the comments. It's weird. Okay, I'll pay attention. Um, yeah, we're supposed to get some rain too, I think. So, right there with you. It might rain all day on the tournament day. So, I'm going to put a few bigger spots on here. I'm trying to decide if I'm going to use like these or if I'm going to use. I'm going to, they have, some of them have like a stripe spot pattern. So I'm just going to use some of these and I'm going to make um, a few like striped spots and I'll just lay this stencil against the leg part here and I'll just spray, you know, I'm covering the ones on the side here with my finger so that I don't spray, you know, like inside the other ones next to it. And then I'll just carefully just hit the ones that I want to hit. And um, I'm going to turn my air down just a smidge so I don't get too crazy with the air pressure. And I just have an adjustable air valve on my quick disconnect. Um, that is called the 
Grex GMAC. Grex is the brand. It's a GMAC adjustable valve. And I highly recommend them if you don't have them. They're not, I think it, it's like 20 bucks or something a piece. And they're worth it. They really are. Okay, so now I have like a few brown black spots and I'm just going to keep going down the leg. And then at the bottom, I'll probably make them just a little bit smaller, but we'll just keep going. I'll find some other ones that are similar, you know, like size wise um, or even a little different and just keep going down the legs. And I'm just using parts of this stencil. So you don't have to use, you know, you can use pieces of stencils. You don't have to like have the perfect stencil for every pattern. You just kind of like cobble together what you have and like make it work so you don't have to cut stencils every time you do something. And believe me, there's patterns where I will. I'll just make a whole new stencil from scratch and that's it's necessary sometimes, but you don't always have to do that. Okay, so this is getting a little smaller down here at the bottom of the leg, right? So um, this is really going slow, but once I get this down, like, and I figure out how I want to do it, it goes faster. So I'll just take some of these like random dots from like one of these other stencils and um, I'll fill in those last two spots. My son's cruising around on it. He's got a um, John Deere loader power wheels and it's pretty dang fast. So if you hear him, he's, he's cruising hardcore. That thing was like totally worth the money. They use it all the time. And he, he pretends like he's digging with daddy and like he puts a rock in the bucket and then he carries the bucket like he carries it over to the pile where he's where dad's working. It's cute. Me and my mom over there. Mom is my first job. If you guys don't know me very well, full time mom, full time, full time mom, full time lure painter. So I got my hands full. So I got a little tip dry. So you just kind of got to blow it out or wipe it off. I usually blow it out because I don't have the patience to wipe it off. So I'm just making little spots. And then there's some spots on these bullfrogs, like um, down by the, they kind of almost go down by the belly here. And then up here, you probably can't see that because my finger's in the way. So like kind of down here by the belly, there's spots and then they kind of come up, you know, by the cheek here. So I'm going to make some small spots there. And we're just going to do like a few little pepper spots on the back too. And I'll just use like whatever stencil I have. So um, I've got some small dots on here that I'm probably just going to use and I'll make them go across the belly right there under the foot. Um, this is low, <laughs> so this kind of detail isn't fast though. And uh, if you're, if you ever wonder why some of these patterns are expensive, watching this is your answer to the, that question because it just takes a long time to paint. The detail, you know, the, the really fine detail is just not bad. See, can you hear him peeling out? Did you hear that? I'm not a hundred percent sure that's even him. It could be my daughter. Are you guys, is everybody still there? Hey, Mike, how's it going? Thanks for the share, Mike, or William. Thank you for the share. I can't, I can only see a few of the comments because for whatever reason, it's not letting me pull up the full video. So I'm running YouTube and Facebook right now though. So that's probably why, because I have too much stuff going. We have satellite internet where we live. So it's not like, uh, the fastest 
I'm going to take some of these smaller dots. This is the modeled, modeled stencil, M-O-T-T-L-E-D. It is made by um, Anarchy Models, and I use it all the time. And a lot of, I would say, why is, why can't I click on this? It won't let me click on it. If you're going to iCast, sweet. That's awesome. I wish I could go. I know some guys that are going. Um, there's a couple guys, local guys, that are um, Cast King reps that are going this year, I think. All right, so this sepia paint sprays like garbage, so that's why it's taking me so long. My secret here, guys, is that I don't usually paint with water-based paint anymore. I paint with lacquer paints because it's faster and it's very toxic, though, so I'm not recommending that you do. Um, you have to have the right setup to do it, but... Um, I don't usually have these problems because I use the toxic stuff most of the time. <laughs> okay, so I made these little dots that go up along the side. And that's that's what the picture that I um, follow looks like. So we're going to do this whole thing on the other side now. It's so much fun to watch. <laughs> Thanks for the shares, guys. We do have, I do have 10% off through tomorrow if you want to check out uh, what's new in the store. Use the code LIVE to get 10% off your order. And that's just for in-stock items. And I also do free shipping if you order $50 or more. So my shipping's not that expensive, though, if you don't. I don't charge that much. So I'm just doing a few dots there, and then I'm going to get some bigger stuff in there along the edge here. I'm just going right along the top of the, the arm where the arm is sitting. I'm waiting for this to just explode all over what I'm working on. I just have this feeling that it's coming. So the arms on here, um, I don't recall there being really much of any spots on the arms, but I'll probably add a few because I do think that there was some, just not very many. So I'll add a few. See, it just exploded. I told you that was going to happen. I'll fix it. It's actually not too bad. So um, what happens is like I get I get a little bit of paint like chunks in there and that's why I'm filtering sepia and then it doesn't want to spray smooth it just kind of wants to pretend like I'm not spraying and then all of a sudden all the paint will come out at once and it'll be like a huge mess and that's just basically what happens so uh, you kind of just have to do the best you can to fix it so it looks like that didn't happen. And usually that involves um, stenciling around the area where you have, you won't be able to see what I'm talking about if I show you up close what I did. Um, it just like spiders out, you know, like the paint. Imagine you put a lot of air on a paint like droplet. It's just going to go like this, right, in all directions. That's kind of what I'm talking about. So that's what happens. And... Um, I call that, well, in the paint, in the airbrush world, you call that spidering. And that's what happens if you get too much tip dry, like if you let, like, too much paint dry on the tip of your needle. And that happens pretty fast. I see that I spilled my paint without noticing it here, too. So that stencil is covered in black paint. Way to go. And um, anyways, so... That's why trigger control is something you have to work on. 
and making sure that you keep your needle tip clean. Okay, I was using some circles here. So I'm gonna paint these dots. I have no idea what just happened there. So I'm just carefully spraying this, not too much paint at once. And then I'm just trying to get good dots. Okay, so we're going down the legs, making like a random dot to match the side. They don't have to be identical. You just want to get them looking similar. Okay, so I've got dots down the leg there now. So I'm going to do a, a couple small dots on the belly right there. Uh, where I did like right here under the toes. I'm going to do under the toes over here too. And then I'm going to do some shading maybe. I got to think about it. I think I'm going to do some shading next. But we still also have to do the ears. It's not their ear. Isn't it how they make that like really horrible noise? Those like circles or whatever. What are the circles called? Can somebody tell me what the circles are called? Because I can't remember what the circles are called. Okay, I'm going to do some dots here on the arm. Just a few light dots on the arm. And they're not in a uniform -ish pattern, really. It's just kind of like a like a random shape. So I'm just using some random stencils. Okay, and then I'll go up the side of the arm here. Huh? Our kids aren't putting things away. Imagine that. Okay. So now let's go ahead and do some shading. So I have all my spots. I want. I'm actually going to do some in the back. I forgot about that. So let's use some small ones for the back here. We're just going to use the spread out area here on the stencil where they're kind of spread out. I'm going to use that and I'm just going to put some dots on the back here. Just in some, just in the middle here. That's kind of what the, the pattern I saw online looked like. So some of them had the dots on the back and some of them had nothing. Um, and so I'm putting the dots on because why not, right? All right, so we're gonna do, I'm gonna clean this out because this stuff sprays like crap. And we're gonna do, uh, the ears so let's do the ears i'll take a peek at my uh is everybody still there share the feed if you can i appreciate the shares everybody very much i can't even refresh my screen i still haven't clear coded the duck that i did yet sorry we're having trouble playing this video Whatever. Yeah. Are you guys still seeing me? I'm not seeing any comments anymore. Everybody still there? Yep. Okay. I don't know why it never works. So let's do this dot on the side. So I'm going to put a little white and a little brown in here. And then maybe a little bit of gold. And we're going to do um, ear, the ear ball. So my gold, I don't know where my gold is. So instead of finding my gold paint, I'm going to grab some gold pigment. 
and you can always well this one's probably okay yeah this is good this is what i'm going to use for the toes so this is called sunset gold and this is a pearl x pigment so you just take a little dip in here and then mix this in with this stuff over here and i don't know that it's even going to show up very much because i put white in here first so uh we'll see probably not probably won't show up really but we're going to try so i'm mixing white and uh some brown and some gold pigment and then the gold is probably not going to show up but we're trying it anyways and we'll see what happens and then we're going to put the dots on the ears uh what are those things called i can't think of what they're called nobody's helping me the facebook view is fine thank you peter um thank you guys for the shares so I'm gonna grab a circular stencil. So I have a whole bunch of circular, I just keep a bunch of circle stencils that I meant to get out, but I forgot. Um, and I'll use that for this. I have like three of them in here, so it shouldn't take me very long to find it. But never say that because then it'll take me forever to find it. Of course, it's going to take me five years to find it. Anyways, this is why I edit people edit videos. So they don't have to, uh, you don't have to see them looking for stencils when you forget to use, for, forget to pull them out. I have like four copies of these circle stencils and I can't find a single one in here. There we go. Got it. Okay. Alright, so this is um, just a bunch of circles. And they're all different sizes. And I just found that image on the internet. So I'm going to take that I'm going to make it sort of big. Uh, right here, there is actually a dot on the blank, but it's really small, so I'm going to make it bigger. So I'm going to take a bigger circle, and I'm going to place it over that, and it's going to be hard to get it to go flush, but I'm going to do my best to not get a ton of overspray everywhere. So I'm just holding it against the lure right now as best as I can, and I'm going to spray straight on as possible to try and get it to look circle. And I'm going to do a little um, dry on that and then and one more coat. Yeah, these swim pretty good. They're, they're heavy. They're like an ounce. But they swim good. So if you haven't tried these, you should. Okay, so now we have that dot which is basically the same color as the brown, which is what my picture look like. So um, I'm gonna do the other side now. And then I'll do some shading and then we'll put a really cool eyeball on these. So uh, a little bit of yellow on the chin. The um, I've got Jetson Lure Eyes, which are custom, the best custom lure, custom lure eyes. Um, I've got some Bullfrog Eyes that I ordered a while back from his site. It's, um, he makes some really cool stuff. And you see a lot of the really wacky detailed eyes. They're probably from him or there's one other company that makes them too. And uh, they make some really sweet looking stuff. So, so I made that a little bit bigger I'm going to check out my reference photo so that I can make sure that I'm not missing any details and that I'm shading it properly. So hang tight. There we go. 
There he is, my little bullfrog. Well, this is one of the pictures. That's not the one that I was specifically not necessarily going off of, but um, this is the one that I was more trying to follow, this reference picture. You can see that. So, whoops, that switched. Somehow that switched, hang on. So I'm gonna go back to that. Okay, so um, we're gonna do a little bit of a line probably. I'll shade this a little bit here because there's that line right there. And then maybe a little bit of green speckle throughout here and the arms. And then a little bit more moss green on the top. So let's do some, um, I'm thinking. I'm thinking about what I want to do first. So these are this whole pattern is um, not really planned in advance, you guys. I do this. I plan it as I go. Okay, so I'm going to clean that out. I'm going to put a little bit of green back in here, and I'm going to do some green on the little bit of green dots on the legs in the back. I'm just going to use this stencil here. And we're just going to add a little bit of green texture because it kind of trickles down over top of the brown. And this stencil should work perfect for that. So there's just some random areas of green on it. And I'm just going to put some random areas of green all over the back. And then on the legs too, there was some speckling of green. So we're gonna do that too. I'm trying to get my motion lights to come back on. Okay, so that looks pretty good actually. I'm trying to make it look as realistic as possible without being too psycho about it. And that's always generally my goal. as realistic as possible without like making a reproduction. So I can't do that. Okay, so this shouldn't take long. So there's some of the green texture that I did on the back and the legs. And I'm just gonna do the legs here on the other side and then I'll move on to some shading. But I keep saying I'm gonna do. If I'm missing your questions um, right now, I'm not looking at the comments, so I will come back to your questions. If you have questions about lower painting, you can ask me, and if I don't answer your question live, You can PM me on Facebook or you can um, shoot me emails as well if you want to. And if I miss your email, it's probably just because I'm so busy with my kids. And I probably just um, forgot to respond. So you can always ask me again. And I'll try not to forget to respond again. Okay. So now I have some green on the legs too. And I got a little bit of overspray here on the belly. So I'll go back with some bone and I'll clean that up. All right, so let's do some shading. So I'm gonna get rid of this green in the right spot. And I'm gonna add a little bit of sepia, but I'm gonna, I'm gonna um, thin it way down so that it's more of a, um, a transparent, a very transparent brown. So just a drop or two. And then add a bunch of reducer. I use 4013. Um, you can use whatever reducer you want from Createx. They all are pretty much the same for the most part. And I'm going to get this like fairly thin so it doesn't overtake everything. And I'm just going to shade over the um, brown along this um, line on the back. I'm going to go up and down that a little bit. And I'm going to darken that um, spine-like area down just a little bit at a time to make it pop out a little bit. I 
I did the last one I did was that pickerel frog, and that one was so hard because um, the spots all had like an outline around them, so I had to do it, the outline in gold, and then do brownish red over top of the gold and line all the spots up exactly like perfectly. It was really hard. <laughs> This isn't quite as torturous as that was. After you do a few of those, you never want to see them again. You're like, please, please never again. Okay, I'm going to do some shading. Um, just kind of darken down the back a little bit here. And sort of blend it into the green up here. I'm just misting over it with this sepia to just darken it down and kind of even out the, the colors a little bit and make the lines not kind of look like so harsh or whatever. Okay, that looks pretty good. So I'm going to go back through now. I'm going to spray a little bit of this onto this card. And then I'm going to take this uh, pigment, this gold pigment, and I'm going to take a Q-tip. You can use like a makeup applicator. They they come with them, but I forgot to grab one. And I don't want to take the time to go look for one, so I'm just going to use a Q-tip, which is like the same thing. And I've got the pigment with a little bit of paint on it on this Q-tip, and I'm just going to paint it on to these fingers. So um, this is one way to avoid freehand painting the fingers. So when you when you, you can kind of just spread it on there and um, you don't have to actually paint them and you get a little bit of that like dark, darker color than the belly. Um, but if you don't have any wet paint with the um, pigment, it doesn't stick quite as good. So just a tiny bit of wet paint. And then this is just a dark gold color that sort of doubles as a brown. Um, you can probably get brown pigment. I've just, I've never actually like bought any. I have some copper and then I have this dark gold color. And if that's not, you know, wet enough, just spray a little more paint and just dip it in the pigment again and then just kind of move it around and then just paint it back on again. So one finger at a time, but this is easier than painting it on um, because you'll get, it'll be more, more accurate this way. So you see how I've got every little finger there without actually painting them? That's how you do it. So do your feet now too. Sorry, I'm scratch. I'm just spraying a little bit of paint on this card and then dipping. Dipping, um, just getting it a little bit wet, so it darkens it down to brown just a little bit. But then I have the gold as well, so the gold is what will stick. I suppose you could paint this on with just paint. Um, you could probably do it that way too, but um, you might make a little bit more of a mess, and it won't clean up as easy probably. With this, you can kind of just blow on it, and the excess will just fall away. So now you can see how that foot, you can see all the little tips. And that's just a really easy way to get the, to get that texture on the bait to show up without actually painting every single toe. All right, so I just have a few more left here, and then I'm going to do a little bit of green shading on top, and then we'll put the eyeball on, uh, the belly, a little yellow on the belly, and then the, a little clean up, and then the eyeballs. So not too much more until we're done. 
and this takes forever when I'm doing it in the show. Like I, I said this before, but I know not everybody watches every single minute of this video. Um, once you get your process down, then you can kind of speed it up a little bit because you're not trying to figure out what to do. You're actually just doing it. Um, this first one is these first toes are a little bit light. So I'm just going back over them again. Now that I have a little more paint on here, I'm just start going down a little bit. And then just blend this pigment in with the rest of the leg and um, let it, you can rub it or whatever you want to do to get like that pigment to blend in with the rest of the arm. So there's not a harsh line between the two. Um, so now you can see all your toes. Cool, huh? All right, so let me clean this. There's something wrong with my airbrush. <laughs> There's something wrong with the trigger. I probably need to replace the the whole trigger mechanism. It's probably just wore out. <clears throat> okay, so I'm just gonna wipe this out and put some moss green in here. Make sure I close this. And this is moss green. It's Wicked Detail moss green, and I already reduced it. It's pre-reduced. And I'm just going to do some shading around the um, the top of the head and the um, the sides. I might even I might even try something uh, kind of around the ears or whatever that is, whatever those are. Go around the eyes here to darken down the eye socket area. Not too much at once. Again, this is um, a dark color, but it's very transparent. So you might not notice how much you're putting on until it's too late and it's starting to run. So just be careful with how much you put on at once. So you'll notice now, once you get so many layers on, that you have some areas that are light and some areas that are dark. And it just makes it look more natural than just putting down one color. So all this layering pays off over time. But it is time consuming, so. Depends how much patience you have, I guess. Okay, I'm gonna darken this area down just a tad bit. Right over here on the side. And I'm gonna that good, I think. Um, I was gonna go around the outside edge of this with a darker color where the I don't want to mess with it though I'm like too nervous to do it so I'm just gonna leave it because I can't okay I'll shut up now so I'm gonna clean this out I'm gonna put the belly overspray that I got on there and then I'll put a little yellow in there and do some just a little yellow on the chinny chin chin okay so this is my bone color. Make sure you shake this one up really good if you buy this because it's got some yellow in it that likes to separate from the white. And uh, you don't have to reduce it. It's um, already, it's ready to spray basically. The Bloodline series is, um, now you wanna be careful because I'm getting a little bit of white overspray. And you don't wanna do that. You even could cover up, like if you didn't want to get overspray on this arm, you could just cover it up with your like finger like this and then spray to get my green overspray gone. And then just any other areas that look like they shouldn't have paint on them basically. Just cover it up with your thumb or whatever like that. And then just spray along the edge of your thumb. So I'm just cleaning the belly up. <laughs> okay, so now it's all pretty white again and the overspray is mostly gone. So I'm gonna take a little yellow, real thin, real thinned out. Uh, this is Wicked Detail Yellow, but I'm actually gonna thin it even a little bit more because I don't wanna overdo it with the yellow. Um, you could even use sunrise yellow. Well, 
Sunrise Yellow looks really orange, but it's actually pretty yellow once you spray it. Let's try Sunrise Yellow. And that's a transparent color. It, it doesn't really turn orange unless you put like a like a, um, a bright yellow color. Well, now it's brown because apparently that was a dirty, I left my brush dirty. So I gotta start over on that. I left my brush dirty with a Nora. And it turned my sunrise yellow brown. And that's no good. So let's try that again. Stir that up. Okay, I'm just going to do a little bit on the chin here. Super light spray. And just fade it down. Take this off. So I'm just spraying like slightly downward here. A little bit yellowish, but not too yellowish. Okay, that's good. So just a little bit of yellow there on the chin, but not much. And you can go right over the feet because they're like a gold pigment and you won't even be able to see that you're spraying yellow over it. It won't show up. Let's get the eyeballs. How about that? I'm going to actually, um, I'm going to make, I put a little black in the eye sockets. I like how the way that it outlines the, I like the way that it um, kind of hugs around your eyeball once you put it in, especially since these are so cool. These bullfrog eyes, and then I gotta go dig those out. This is just a little bit of black. And all I'm doing is going around the eye socket just like that. So you're just getting a little bit of overspray around the outside edges of the eye socket. You're not really like trying to get it outside the eye socket, just right around the edges, like. So let me grab my eight millimeter eyes. It'll take me two seconds here. Okay, and then let me find my frog eyes. I don't have that many eight millimeters, so it won't be that hard to find them. Okay, I have all these cool eyes from Jets and Lure Eyes, and these are all different frog eyes, but I have full frog eyes specifically. <clears throat> okay. These are the bullfrog eyes right here. Let me go back to my feed so I can see what you guys are saying to me, if you're saying anything at all. Uh, the needle tip cover off, I think it helps because you can clean off your needle on the fly. You don't have to take the cover off to do it. Okay, so these, you don't really have to glue these because they have, um, they have pretty good adhesive on them. Usually I super glue my eyes on um, I'm looking at the picture here to make sure that I put these on. Can't tell really which way they're supposed to go. Okay. These have really good adhesive on them, these Jetsons do, so you don't really need um, to glue these just because they're good quality and a lot of the other eyes that you get are very, they're just cheap and they don't have good adhesive, so. This is a little wetter than I'd like it to be. I nicked it. Well, see, I say that and then it falls off. But that's just happening because the paint isn't dry. So I'll go back and fix it. So there is your bullfrog. Let me, go. Let me pull up the feed so I can see everybody's comments and see if you have any questions I didn't answer. So there is Mr. Bullfrog in all his glory. And he will have a lip on him then. And I think he looks pretty good. I might make a few tweaks, but all in all, I think it looks pretty realistic. All right. Um, I use uh, my, I use mostly, um, I use mostly, Badger brushes. I use the Patriot 105 and the Extreme Patriot 105. Um, and then I also use an Awada Clips, but I mostly use Badger Patriots. Um, Eden has claimed them. 
Thank you. Um, if I missed any of you guys' comments, I can't see them all right now because Facebook sucks. What's the easiest pattern for beginners? Um, shad, like any shad, basic shad, um, are the easiest. You just need to get some mesh and just play around with colors. That's where I would start probably. Um, anyway, I'm going to make some more of these. So if you guys do want to order them or if you want a specific like frog color let me know but i'm going to make some more of these and i'm going to put them in the store so look for those in the weeks to come and thanks you guys for watching um if you have any questions shoot me a pm please go to the store coloradocustomlures.com you can enter code live in all caps l-i-v-e uh and that will be good through tomorrow night if you want to order something in the store fifty dollars and up gets you free shipping so take advantage of that if you can and um you guys all have a great weekend. Thank you for watching and we will see you next week. Bye.